Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about Snell's Law. Snell's Law is all about the refraction of light, and this picture just shows what happens when light refracts as it moves from one substance into another. So let's take a look at our learning goal for today. You should be able to calculate the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, the index of refraction of the first medium, or the index of refraction of the second medium when you're given all of the other values. So let's take a look at Snell's Law. First, let's just take a look at the equation in white there. That's the standard version of Snell's Law. Um, it shows how the relationship between what's happening in the first medium to the relationship of what's happening in the second medium. So N1 stands for the index of refraction in the first medium. Theta1 is the angle of incidence. N2 is the index of refraction in the second medium, and theta2 is the angle of refraction. So we can see it relates what's happening in the first medium into the second medium. Now, in order to use Snell's law, you need to isolate each of the different variables depending on what the question is asking you. So for example, if the question is asking you to solve for the index of refraction in the first medium, you would want to rearrange the equation like the orange one uh, that's shown there. So I've rearranged the equation in each of the four different ways that you'll need to use. Um, it is up to you how you would like to go about this. If you're very good at rearranging equations, you'll probably just want to memorize the white equation and rearrange equations each time that you do your problem solving for tests or assignments and so on. If you struggle with rearranging equations, you may want to memorize those four rearranged equations and use those when you're solving your problems or on tests or quizzes and so on. So it's up to you which method you would like. If you would like to learn how to rearrange the equations but you don't remember how to do this from math class, and I'm not going to go through the steps here because it was expected you already learned these in math, if you're struggling with that from math class and you'd like to learn, we can sit down in class and go over those steps so that you know how to rearrange these on your own. So let's take a look at an example here. Light travels from air with an index of refraction of 1.00 into a sugar water solution at an angle of incidence of 54.0 uh, degrees. The angle of refraction is 37.14 degrees. What is the index of refraction of the sugar water solution? So we're given a lot of information here. Let's take a look at what we have. So light travels from air, which has an index of refraction of 1.00, into a sugar water solution that has, uh, and it happens at an angle of incidence of 54.0 degrees. The angle of refraction is 37.14 degrees, and we need to know the index of refraction of the sugar water solution. So let's use our grass method to solve for these. So we'll start off with our givens. We know that air has an index of refraction of 1.00. Now it says light travels from air, so it's starting in air, which means air is N1, not N2. It's N1 because this is where the light starts, and N1 is always where, where the light starts. So N1 equals 1.00. The angle of incidence is 54.0 degrees. Theta1 represents the angle of incidence, so we'll say that theta1 equals 54.0 degrees. And then it tells us the angle of refraction is 37.14 degrees. Theta 2 represents the angle of refraction. So theta 2 equals 37.14 degrees. And then we need our givens. It's asking us the index of refraction of the sugar water solution. Since the light travels from air into sugar water solution, that means sugar water solution is the second um, material that the, the light is going into, so it's N2 this time. So N2 equals question mark. So for our analysis, we have our Snell's Law formula. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And we can rearrange this equation to solve for N2. So N2 is going to equal N1 sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. And again, if you don't know how to rearrange this equation, come ask me in class and we can go through those steps. 
So the next is to substitute and solve. So n2 equals, and we have up there that m1 is 1.00, sine, and our theta1 is 54.0 degrees. And that's all over sine, and theta2 is 37.14 degrees. And if we do our math, that's going to equal 1.3. Now, if you're unfamiliar with using sine on your calculator, come ask me in class. Every calculator is slightly different, so I can't show you here, push this button and then this button and this one, and that'll give you the answer, because for some of them, you need to type in the angle and then sine. Some of them, you need to type in the sine button and then the actual angle. So it depends on your particular calculator. So if you haven't experienced this in math class yet, or you forget how to use your calculator using the signs, um, just come ask me in class and we can go through those steps. And so then our final step here is the sentence. So the index of refraction of the sugar water is 1.34. So that's how we would solve a problem like that. Let's take a look at another type of example. So light travels from amber, which has an index of refraction of 1.55, into water, which has an index of refraction of 1.33. And it happens at an angle of incidence of 59 degrees. What is the angle of refraction? So we're given a lot of information here. Amber has an index of refraction of 1.55, water has an index of refraction of 1.33, and the angle of incidence is 59 degrees. So let's go through the steps here. So we're going to start off with our givens. It says light travels from amber into water. That means amber is N1 and water is N2, which means N1 is going to equal 1.55 1.55 and 2 is going to equal 1.33 and the angle of incidence is theta 1 that represents angle of incidence so our angle of incidence is 59 degrees and then the question asks us what is the angle of refraction theta 2 represents angle of refraction so that's what we're looking for and we'll start off with our general formula for Snell's law so n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. And if we rearrange this equation and we're looking for theta 2, theta 2, oops, that's a 2 there, theta 2 equals the inverse sine of n1 sine theta 1 over n2. And again, you should have learned about inverse signs in your math class. If you're not familiar with these, please ask me in class and I'll show you how to use your particular calculator to solve inverse signs. So let's go into our uh, substitute and solve. So theta 2 equals the inverse sign of our n1 is 1.55 and our angle of incidence is 59 degrees over n2 is 1.33 and if we do that math there we're going to end up with 87 degrees so we can write our uh, sentence here so the angle of refraction is 87 degrees so that's how we would solve a problem like that. So let's take another look at our learning goal. You should be able to calculate the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, the index of refraction of the first medium, or the index of refraction of the second medium when you're given the other three values. Now we just looked at two of those cases. The other two are very similar, and you'll see from that slide where I rearranged the equations, you have equations to solve for each of those four things. 
right? That if you uh, understand how to do that, that's fantastic. If you're still having trouble, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble after that, please ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye bye.